Welcome everyone to today's uh, live session organized uh, by AID PMDB uh, program uh, team. Uh, PMDB is the professional master in structural design of tall buildings. I am on and I will be your host for today's talk on nonlinear modeling and analysis using ETFs and Perform 3D. Before we start, uh, please allow me to provide you with an overview of PMDB. This professional master program is designed by the engineers with extensive professional experience in tall buildings projects and is offered for the practicing professional structural engineers in a blended learning environment. Considering the existing commitments of the professional engineers, this program provides an opportunity to take advantage of flexible learning that is aligned with the, le the latest industry trends and without leaving your jobs and or ongoing professional commitments. For the registered participants, uh, we are offering a special information session on PMDB for which we will provide you with a form to know your queries as well as your suitable schedule for the information session. In today's talk, engineer Shabir Ali Talbar, manager of civil and structural engineering unit of AID solutions and myself will be sharing about the nonlinear modeling and analysis using ETAPS and Perform 3D, structural engineering software, which are commonly used in design of tall buildings. Let me uh, start uh, with nonlinear modeling and analysis using ETAPS. After that, uh, engineer Shabir will continue the nonlinear modeling and analysis in Perform 3D. If you have any questions, uh, please send message in the chat box. Let me share my screen. Okay. So these days uh, we are carrying out the performance-based uh, seismic design in our design of our tall buildings as well as the seismic evaluation for the existing buildings. Performance-based uh, design approach can uh, substan <clears throat> to substantiate the specific uh, pres uh, prescriptive code requirements, and also we can demonstrate the higher performance level for a structure. And also we can use the innovative uh, structural systems which are not mentioned in the code. But in performance-based seismic design, uh, we have to normally we conduct the nonlinear uh, analysis to check the uh, response of the building. In the in nonlinear analysis, uh, these days, uh, because of high computational power of the computers, we are using the nonlinear response history analysis. When we model the when we create the nonlinear model, so we have to consider the material nonlinearities of the for the re, for the. Uh, reinforced concrete building, we consider the concrete and rebar nonlinear uh, properties in, at the material level. Not only that, we also uh, model the structural components with the lamp plasticity hinges, considering the uh, force deformation behavior, uh, moment or moment and rotation, or uh, axial force and axial deformation uh, to consider the nonlinear response under the uh, seismic loads. So for the uh, material level, uh, we have to consider the concrete uh, and rebar. For concrete, we are considering the confinement effect in the modeling when we do the performance-based design, especially in the shear walls columns, uh, if we use the uh, fiber modeling. So uh, if we have uh, more confinement in the concrete material, the concrete becomes uh, more tactile in compression. So 
these effects, uh, stress strain properties are considered, needs to be considered in the modeling. So when we uh, model these material properties in ETFs, uh, we can model those uh, stress strain behavior of the confined and confined concrete based on the provided confinement uh, information. As shown in the figure, uh, we can, uh, we, I compared the uh, and confined uh, concrete stress strain plot and the confined concrete uh, stress strain plot. When we model the uh, moment frames in the structural system, uh, we consider the nonlinear response of the beams and columns, in, especially in the uh, flexured response, because these uh, response are, uh, this response is tactile behavior. So uh, for the beams, we check the flexure rotation capacity as a deformation control action. And uh, also, uh, and for the columns, we consider the axial flexure rotation as a deformation control action. For the brittle actions, like shear deformation, axial compression in the columns, those uh, uh, responses we consider as force control action. We uh, do not model the nonlinear response of force, co force control actions, but we model the def uh, deformation control action, uh, tactile response in the nonlinear model. So when we model the uh, beams, we for the flexure response, we consider the uh, <laughs> We model with the moment rotation uh, backbone curve using the, normally we use the ASC 4117 uh, uh, nonlinear modeling parameters and acceptance criteria. Those criteria uh, depends on the compression reinforcement ratio, uh, transverse reinforcement, and also shear stress ratio uh, to check the uh, rotation uh, demand and performance levels. So in ETAPS, uh, you can define those uh, moment rotation uh, hinge properties of the beams uh, by in inputting the moment uh, demand in the hinge information. And also you can generate, you can uh, develop the backbone curve uh, of the moment rotation hinge. Not only that, we can also define the hysteresis parameters for the uh, uh, degrading for degrading uh, uh, response, so those parameters will adjust the uh, hysteresis area of the hysteresis loop. Not only the not only importing the bending moment, uh, yielding moment uh, capacity of the beam, you can also specify the reinforcement longitudinal reinforcement area at at the top and bottom of the left and right ends of the beam and the program can automatically calculate the yielding moment capacity and develop the backbone curve. For the columns, uh, in practice, we use the fiber hinges uh, for the BMM uh, response. So in ETAPS, you can define the reinforcement layout and number uh, layout and vertical re uh, reinforcement uh, number of bars in details easily. So based on that information, the program can automatically generate the fiber hinges for the uh, BMM fiber hinge. But for the column fiber hinge, you need to uh, calculate, provide the import the hinge length. So that hinge length can be calculated uh, based on the hinge length formula that I mentioned in the slide. So this hinge length uh, formula is determined based on the laboratory uh, test results. Another component that we need to consider in the nonlinear model is uh, reinforced concrete coupling beams, which couple the uh, shear walls that we normally use in tall building projects. So for, there are two types, generally there are two types of reinforced concrete coupling beams. The, front, the first type is the conventional beam and another type is the diagonal reinforced beam. For conventional beam, we uh, model like a uh, normal uh, moment frame beam. Uh, flexure response is considered as deformation control and shear response is considered as 
uh, critical force control. But in diagonal ring force coupling beam, uh, we consider the shear de deformation as the uh, shear response as a deformation control action. In the figures, uh, in the photos, uh, you can see the damage pattern of the diagonal and conventional reinforced coupling beams uh, at the rotation level of uh, around 0 0.05 to 0 0.06 uh, radian. So for the uh, coupling beams, uh, we use the ASC 41 table for, uh, for for the conventional and diagonal uh, reinforcement uh, based on the provided details. Uh, for diagonal reinforcement, uh, you can use the uh, only one uh, condition uh, without uh, the shear stress uh, ratio. So collapse prevention, it is quite tactile. Collapse prevention, you can go up to 0 0.05 uh, radian. So these are the uh, modeling of diagonal reinforced coupling beam. For that conventional reinforced coupling beam, you can use same as the um, normal moment frame uh, beam. But for the diagonal uh, coupling beam, you have to model the shear hinge. Shear hinge is a uh, shear displacement type. So in this hinge, you have to input the displacement of the hinge, not the rotation. But in the table, it shows the uh, rotation of the uh, rotation uh, limits and uh, modeling parameters. So you have to convert those rotation modeling parameters to the shared uh, to the particle displacement and input in the form. And for the shear hinge, uh, you have to calculate the shear capacity of the diagonal reinforced coupling beam using the area of the diagonal reinforcement. And for the shear walls, uh, we use the fiber modeling and model the uh, uh, concrete and the rebar uh, for the flexure uh, deformation. So for the shear walls, we check the axial strains in the rebar and the concrete uh, with the limits. And for the shear capacity, we consider as the force control and check uh, designed to remain elastic. So. For the shear walls, uh, we have to uh, input the area of the conc concrete fibers because the component is discretized with the uh, concrete fibers and steel fibers. And then we check the uh, compressive strain of concrete and uh, tensile strain of rebar. For the compressive strain of concrete, uh, we check uh, for the, if it is unconfined concrete, we check with uh, 0 0.003 uh, strain limit. If it is intermediate confined concrete, uh, we use uh, 0 0.004 as a strain limit. If it is fully confined, we use 0 0.015. For the rebar, uh, we use the yielding strain of 0 0.002, but actual limit is 0 0.05. So passing the limit rebar uh, yielding strain of 0 0.002 means, uh, doesn't mean it is not, uh, doesn't mean it is failed. It is just showing this uh, shear wall is yielding in flexure response. So in ETAPS, good thing is uh, you can define the reinforcement area very easily. So in the you just uh, uh, select the shear wall and. Uh, for example, in the boundary zone, if you provide the confinement uh, reinforcement and also the larger uh, vertical reinforcement amount. So in that, in that uh, boundary zone, you mesh the uh, shell element and input the vertical rebar ratio directly. And in the middle zone, for example, if you use the minimum uh, amount, in that case, you can use uh, just 0.25% uh, for the vertical rebar. So rebar input, for the shear wall uh, fiber uh, sections are very uh, fast. And another thing is after you define and assign the nonlinear properties in the model, you need to define the nonlinear response history uh, analysis cases. First, you have to define the time history functions. Uh, and then uh, you have to define the nonlinear uh, time history case. 
first you need to define the nonlinear gravity case, and then you continue from that gravity case uh, to define the nonlinear uh, time history. So you need to input the ground motions in uh, X and Y direction uh, together. You have to apply those uh, pair of ground motions uh, simultaneously. And then uh, scale factor 9.81, because uh, we, we use the unit of uh, G. So that's why we, I use uh, 9.81 uh, meter per second squared. And then number of output time steps, uh, you have to check the uh, ground motion, uh, total number of steps, and then you have to input accordingly. And also output time step size. So it depends on the ground motion uh, time step size. So in this ground motion, the time step size is 0 0.02 second. So I input 0 0.02 second for the output uh, time step size. If possible, uh, I recommend it to uh, analyze uh, the to conduct the analysis longer than the actual number of steps in the uh, ground motion. For example, uh, ground motion is 32 second duration. But if you are building a natural period, natural first nat first mode natural period acid, let's say five seconds, so you should run uh, at least uh, five second more, so 37 second duration because when the ground motion stop, the building can uh, still vibrate and still swaying. So it is like a, uh, so to consider the uh, vibration after the earthquake, you still need to uh, analyze the building at least, uh, at least the uh, natural period of the first fundamental mode. After uh, analysis, uh, you can uh, check the global response in the form, uh, displacement, drift, story shear, story moment together. And also it can animate it uh, in the in, in ETAPS. For example, I will show you this video. So this video shows the uh, response of the acceleration, drift, shear, uh, story share and uh, story moment along the time history. Here you can see how this uh, building is uh, behaving. For example, at the particular uh, time step, uh, the what uh, time step is giving you the absolute uh, largest absolute acceleration. At the same step, what is the story moment? Something like that, you can uh, check it. For example, it is going uh, close to the peak uh, of the uh, time history. So you will see the uh, story shear value. It will be uh, closer to the uh, maximum value. Here, okay, it is going. Okay, so from that uh, time history, you can uh, see that uh, story shear and uh, story moment at, at each particular step. And also you can also check the energy plots, uh, how the damage is uh, occurred uh, to assess the damage uh, qualitatively. So from that energy plot, you can see the nonlinear hysteresis damping. So that uh, energy, you can uh, also check how much, if that energy is uh, very large, in that case, uh, the damage will be uh, more. And you can compare with the uh, uh, global damping, okay? And also you can uh, check the story drift plots, uh, lateral displacement plots directly uh, from the uh, model. And also you can check the acceptance, uh, the deformation of the hinges defined in the frame members with the acceptance criteria with the uh, color. 
and not only the uh, the acceptance criteria check uh, with the color, uh, you can also check the axial strains in the reinforced concrete and rebar of each fiber from the columns and the shear walls. So from this uh, picture, you can uh, check the uh, rebar strain of the column at, at the corner rebar strain. Okay, that rebar is not yielding in this uh, result. And also you can check the hysteresis response of the moment rotation of the column. And this is for the uh, rotation results of the beam, hysteresis loop for the beam, this beam is yielding, but uh, it is, the deformation is not significantly large, but it, it, but it is already yielded. And also at the shear walls, you can also check uh, like columns for the compressive uh, strain in the and confined concrete in the middle zone and also rebar strain. Here we can see uh, the rebar is shear wall re rebar is not yielding. Okay, so that's all uh, for the brief uh, explanation uh, about the nonlinear modeling in ETAPS. My colleague, uh, engineer Shabir, will continue the nonlinear modeling analysis in uh, Perform 3D. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Strong. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so I will share my screen now and then start my presentation. Okay. Okay, so the presentation uh, that I'm gonna present now is about Perform 3D. So uh, Ms. Rom gave a very detailed explanation of about what the things that we have to do, the things that we have to take care of while doing performance-based design. Uh, my presentation mostly is just introduction to Perform 3D software and some of the features that, that are available in the program. Um, most of the features that you will see in Perform will be very similar to what we have in ETABS, barring some minor differences. Um, so, okay, so we have to, let's say, uh, do a nonlinear model in Perform, there are some steps that we have to follow to come up with the nonlinear model and then do the analysis. We have to define our basic geometries first, and then we have to define our properties in elastic and in an elastic both. And then once we have defined our properties, we have to assign them to our members. Um, we have to define some response measures uh, so that we are able to extract the, um, the, the responses of all the components. And then we define load cases, analyze the models, extract the results and interpret them. So I'll just introduce you to the features that are available in the program and some things that you can do to, to, um, uh, to do the performance based design. Okay. Um, these are some, some, some detailed descriptions here and I'll, I'll, I'll follow them uh, during my presentation. Um, so when you want to define uh, your structure geometry in perform, you have two options, one option, and it's a very good option as well that, you can import your geometry through text files and the text file will be a simple you know, comma separated file where you have uh, for say for example for line members you'll have uh, coordinates of i and j and nodes and for area members you'll have coordinates of i j k l nodes uh, you can get a text file like this from etabs as well so the latest version of etabs uh, it has the option uh, to generate a perform 3D geometry text file for you. So, because definition of geometry is easier than the tab, so you can just get the text files from there if you want to create a perform model. You can also export a complete ETAS model to perform model as well. Um, yeah, there are some things that you might need to clear out later, but that option is also available. Uh, another thing that you can do is that if you're not comfortable with defining your and importing your geometries, you can go ahead and define your geometry. So there are options of defining nodes. And then once you have your nodes defined, then you have to then go ahead and define your, draw your elements as well. Uh, one key concept of in perform is the concept of groups. Uh, so all the elements are separated into groups. Uh, 
if you want in your model you need to have at least two groups uh, one will be line element types and then other will be the area element types. so area and line element cannot be in the same group but if you want you can keep all of your columns and beams in the same group and all of your slabs and walls in the same group as well generally we don't recommend that we will it's easier to separate your beams and columns and 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 slabs and walls and the reason is that uh, once a certain group is active you will only be able to modify the properties and assignments of that particular group so it's easier to work with now once you have your geometry and groups and everything nodes and element defined and drawn you'll need to come up with your nonlinear and linear properties so for the nonlinear properties perform has a basic backbone relationship which it uses for all the components the basic backbone relationship is called yulrx uh, backbone relationship so if you will look at the pictures that are shown in the in the presentation you will see that the, there are multiple points in the backbone curve. so there's a y point which is your yield point u point which is your ultimate point and the, the point that is missing here in this picture is the l point which is somewhere here if you can see my a mouse pointer and then you will have a r point which will be somewhere here and then you will have an x point over here so this these are the five points that you will need to use to come up with your back curve. now if you want you you can use only three points uh, so you can do away with l and r point if you don't want to model for your step up but um you will have to at least define two points in any back curve. And then if you want to be more precise, you can have uh, different types of, of, of points in your backbone curve. Um, so in, in, there are two types of uh, shapes that you will be able to come up with your backbone curve. So one will be elastic perfective plastic, which is shown here. And then the other one will be the simple trilinear backbone relationship. So trilinear is basically three lines, one, two, and three here. Elastic perfective plastic will be a straight line after the yield. And if you want, you can model this. Um, so when you have that basic backbone curve already understood, you can use the same concept and define different sort of uh, backbone curves. So some 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 uh, definitions that you will need in your nonlinear model, especially if you have area elements, or you can use them in line elements as well. Is uh, the material stress strain relationship. So you will need this resistant relationships to define your fiber sections similar to the way that we have in e types as well uh, the only difference here is that perform backbone relationship is limited to five points whereas in e types which you can have as many points as you want for your material uh, stress strain relationship so you can see here that i've shown the pictures that there are two uh, uh, stress strain relationships one for concrete one for a rebar the rebar here shown is a non-buckling rebar but you can have a buckling sort of a rebar as well and then you can have different relationships for confined and confined concrete um yeah so once you have those material stress strains defined and then you can use those material stress strains to come up with your fiber sections you can have fiber sections for walls, and you can have send fiber sections for uh, for shear walls as well uh, one thing to note over here is that it will not be as user friendly as ETAP. So when you want to define your um, uh, your fiber sections, you will need to um, input data manually. For shear walls, it will not be as tedious as it is true for columns. So um, some some features that are available in, in in Perform might not be as convenient as they are in ETAP because ETAP will be able to um, um, you'll able you'll be able to do fiber sections very easily. It will automatically generate fiber sections for you once you give it the rebar information. Perform is a bit, uh, it's not as not as flexible as it is. Um, and then you can also have your multiple uh, different types of uh, hinges as strong defined before. You'll have, you can have shear type hinges and you can have uh, rotation type hinges. And then there are multiple uh, options available i've listed them down here so you can have moment hinge rotation type curvature type uh, semi-rigid moment hinges um shear hinges pm2 pm3 hinges and then v2 v3 shear hinges 
right? So these are all the options that are available for you to be able to define your non lump nonlinear uh, lump nonlinearities. Um, but another good option available in perform is for you to be able to view your aesthetic shapes uh, of a particular um, component once you have defined your component completely with the energy factors. The energy factors will be the same as we saw in ETABs previously as well. So within once you've defined your uh, your component, then you can put some numbers of deformations and you can see how your aesthetic uh, look will behave for that hinge. Um, another thing that is also very good in perform is the concept of deformation capacities and limit states. Limit states I'll discuss further ahead. I'll just talk about deformation capacities now. The deformation capacities are basically capacities that you give to a certain component. And now that capacity is your own choice. Whatever capacity that you give to the component, the component will have that capacity. Uh, and that capacity is only used by the program to calculate the demand to capacity ratios. Right? It doesn't impact the analysis results. So it, the program will only report you back the deformed to, uh, demand to capacity ratios for the capacities that you have given to a certain component. And these capacities are later used by limit states to give you that uh, demand to capacity ratio. So um, you can give, uh, say for example, if you have a moment hinge, then you can give uh, in that moment hinge uh, a different capacity, the different capacities. You will have your option to uh, define up to five capacities. Uh, and then you can then tell the program to use which capacity for which component, and then it gives you the decision for that. Um, another good option available in form is the concept of strength sections. So strength sections are so previously um, what what I showed you was was, was the nonlinear hinges, which um, deform after they yield. Uh, but say for example, if you have components that you don't want to yield, and for those components uh, you will not add or for those particular actions, should I say, you will not add your nonlinearity. So say for example, um, it's possible that for your beam shear, you don't want your beam shear to be nonlinear. Uh, but if you don't make it nonlinear, that does not mean that you're not going to check it. So if you want to check what is happening with your beam shear, you can use a strength section. So strength section is basically a section which has capacity defined into it, similar to the way you will have in a deformation capacity. And then the program uses that capacity to give you the strength DC ratio. So say for example, if your beam has a, a shear capacity of 200 kilonewton, uh, then the program can use that capacity to give you back the DC ratio uh, for the shear. Because during time history, you'll have multiple points and it will be tedious for you to uh, calculate the DC ratio. So the program does it for you and it reports you back the DC ratio for all the uh, components which have uh, strength sections. And then you can have strength sections for PMM as well. So say for example, if you model your column as uh, linear elastic, you can put a PMM strength section and then the program can use the PMM strength section to give you a boost DC ratio for PM. Okay. And then Another thing that you might want to do, uh, especially in terms of shear walls, is that you have your shear walls with nonlinear fiber sections already, but how do you measure the performance of the shear wall? So the way that you measure the performance of the shear wall is that you, you define your strain gauges. Now, strain gauges can be of multiple types. Uh, they can be linear strain gauges, and then they can be rotation type as well. So the linear strain gauges basically measure axial strain at wall corners. And then they tell you what is the amount of axial strain. And looking at the axial strain, you can judge whether your shear wall has yielded or not. Right? So that gives you an option of measuring, um, of checking shear wall yielding. Um, rotation type of strain gauges are strain gauges which measure the rotation between the four nodes for which you draw your rotation gauge. If those nodes match the nodes of the wall or a wall element in a particular story, then you can measure the rotation uh, of the wall in that particular story or wall like in that particular story. And you can then go ahead and compare your rotations with the um, with the, with the limits given in ASCE or any other guideline and then see whether you are within the limit or beyond the limit and make make engineering judgments based on the results that the rotation cages are giving you.
Right? Um, there are some special uh, components that are also available in Buffer, which you can use to model uh, a special element. So uh, you can have you you if you have your bucket machine braces in your in your project then you can use the brb element in perform and then model your buckling stream braces as nonlinear as well um if you want if you are inclined towards modeling um uh, the infill walls uh, then you can have the options of the infill panels that are available in perform uh, you can use them and then you can model your infill walls nonlinear as well um yeah. and as I, just, as I said before um we, we we use the deformation capacities in the components, right? Uh, but how does the program know that uh, what DC ratio to give you? So you then have to use the concept of limit states. So limit states are basically um, a way in which we tell the program, this is the limit for which I want you to give me the DC ratio. So if my limit state level I hope you can see my pointer here. If the level shown here is one, uh, that means that the program is going to use uh, the first level of deformation that I defined. Because as I mentioned previously, we are, there are five levels of deformation that we can define. Um, and then the, in the limit state, we are telling the program which level of deformation to pick while it is calculating the decision. So the example that I've shown you here is the second example of strain cages. So strain cages can have deformation capacity as well. And in those strain cages, um, we will give deformation capacities. We can give up to five deformation capacities. And here I'm telling the program to use the deformation capacity that I entered in the first level and give me a decision for that. And the deformation can be any, whatever I want, the program will report me back a decision for that. Um, and in perform. So another good option that you have available is your option to do parallel analysis. Uh, the parallel analysis is a concept where the program leverages the multiple cores that you have available in your in your machine, and then it can run multiple analysis at the same time using your the, the amount of uh, computational power that you have available in your in your machine so you can have as i think the limit is up to eight so you can if you have eight cores uh, then the program can use it can use those eight cores to run eight analysis parallel and then this saves you the time of um basically you don't have to stack up your analysis you can just run them all together and use the use all of the computational power that you have available Right? and you don't have to buy multiple machines as well to run multiple analysis. Uh, another good option available in Perform is, is the general analysis series option. So analysis series is basically where you run your analysis and uh, there are two types, there's standard type. So in a standard type, you will have uh, uh, analysis where you can run all the analysis after gravity only. And in the general analysis series, any analysis after um, and the, the preceding analysis can be any it doesn't have to be gravity so then you can use that concept and run you run your uh, cyclic analysis as well so here i've shown an example where i am running multiple static pushovers to come up with a hysteretic backbone curve of the entire structure so uh, i mean this can be any structure you can have like a entire tall building right and then in that one, what I'm doing is that after running my gravity, I'm running pushovers. And the next pushover is going to continue from where the previous one ended. And then because I am continuing from where the previous one ended, I'm getting a continuous cyclic loop. But your analysis has to be defined in that way so you can get that 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 cyclic loop. Um, and then once you have your time history analysis done, you can have the energy breakdown as well. Uh, this is very similar to what you saw in ETAPS as well. So both programs have similar options. Uh, but good option in Perform that you might not find in ETAPS is that it will give you the energy breakdown of a particular element group. As well. So the picture that you see here at the bottom is the overall energy breakdown. So you have 
energy being dissipated through um, kinetic energy and then you have your uh, viscous damping energy being dissipated and then you have your energy being dissipated shown in red here from the inelastic component. So this is the total energy being dissipated by all the inelastic components that I have in my model. And from this inelastic energy dissipated energy, what was the energy dissipated by a particular element group? So let's say, for example, if I have element group of coupling beams, what was the energy dissipated by coupling beams? What was the energy dissipated by my group of shear walls? Something like that. So that's a, an, an, an additional thing that ETF doesn't have that perform has where you can see the energy breakdown of in, in, in a particular uh, element group. Right? Um, once you have your analysis done, you can also form shapes and then you can have the option where you can see the uh, color of your element change based on the on the level of deformation that you're experiencing and then you can use these things to see the damage um, or, or or the damage according to the deformation capacities that you've defined in the model. Um, you can see your results and histories similar to what you saw in the edges. Um, and then if you want, you can also see your hysteretic loop of the of individual components. This is a hysteretic loop shown for, uh, I guess this is a um, moment hinge. Um, and then you can also see the histories of element forces or a line of element forces. So here in this example, I've just picked up a line of columns and then you can Plot the the shear force and movement variation uh, throughout the throughout the, uh, the, the uh, time history. Um, yeah, and another option that form also gives you, I guess this might be available in ETAPS as well, is the option of calculating the target displacements in, in, in pushover plot. So once you have your pushover backbone curve, if you define your your uh, spectras and then you are uh, give it the demand points correctly, then it will be able to calculate for you the, the um, target displacement. Um, it can also show you, the program can also show you the the DC ratios for for groups. So each group will have a component defined in it. And for that component, what's the maximum DC ratio? You can see it like that. Another option that you also have is that you can then combine your DC ratios from multiple analyses. So, um, say for example, when you want to run seven time histories, all of the seven time histories have been run in the same um, in the same computer, then you can use the combination option in perform where it will combine the DC ratios of multiple analysis for you and give you a combined result. And then the combination can be of different types. They have different options. Okay, so that's all from my side. Um, okay, so thank you everyone. Uh, before uh, we conclude, uh, our session, uh, I would like to announce uh, uh, something about uh, AID Solutions. Uh, AID Solutions uh, is offering not only the consulting uh, services of uh, performance based seismic design, uh, wind tunnel testing, and uh, software uh, development, not only those are services, we are also offering the knowledge, uh, we are also conducting the knowledge transfer activities. Uh, offering the trainings in PVD and uh, CSI software, uh, application of CSI software. If you are interested, uh, you can uh, visit our website, solutions.aid.ac.ph uh, slash knowledge transfer. And you can see the uh, our training uh, programs. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone uh, for your time uh, joining this session. And uh, if you are interested in a professional uh, master program in the structural design of tall building, please uh, contact us. Okay, thanks again. Uh, please uh, stay safe.